Hey guys, this is Chelsea. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for coming. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my hair care routine and then when I style my hair, I'll tell you a bit about my hair care journey. So before I get in the shower, I'll go through what the products I'm going to use are. I'll be starting with the Wee Dad Ready Set Clean. Now this is a like a pre-shampoo deal. This is really to get your scalp really cleansed. I've only used it a couple times, but it's almost out because it's a sample, uh, but I have really liked it so far. Next, I'll be going in with the Ultra Nourishing Cleansing Oil. It's also from Wee Dad. It's also a sample size. I got a lot of this during their sale. They have a lot of sales, like 30, 35% off usually, uh, but I really love this stuff. It smells really good and it cleanses my hair, but it doesn't leave it super stripped or anything. I feel like it's still very nourished when I'm done cleansing and I usually double cleanse, so that's really important to me that I feel like my hair is still intact afterwards. Um, and then next, I'll be going in with the Garnier Fertis triple nourishing cleansing shampoo it's a nice big bottle um i feel like if i'm gonna go to like a regular drugstore and get any shampoo it's gonna be either garnier fructis or the pantene um like the the look like just there at the pantene curl collection i forgot what it's called uh but i really like this i feel like this is also really good in a pinch and then i'll follow up with the triple nourishing conditioner also the same size and after I do my conditioner, I will go in with my brush. This is the brush I use. She's kind of in intense, um, but I really like it because it's curved and it gets to my scalp really easily. I used to only finger curl, or I mean, sorry, finger, yeah, finger curl my hair, um, but I found that I got a lot of hair in the drain and I, I hate that. So using a brush really helps the hair to stay out of the drain and it helps it to stay a lot less clogged. And then I will follow up with, finally, the Garnier Fructis Papaya Hair Treatment, the three-in-one. I use this as a deep conditioner. It's, oh my God, it smells really good. I love papaya, um, but it doesn't really last a long time for me because my hair is pretty thick, but this will last me about five washes. And then I'll follow up with, <laughs> okay, sorry, my dad came in to give me a hug, uh, but I'm going to finish off with this and then I will go style it in my bedroom and I will show you guys my products there, and there is where I will tell you about my hair care journey. So I will see you guys after my shower. Okay, hello again. Hair is washed. I look a little bit like Coolio, but I'm fine with that. Oh, RIP, right, okay. Anyway, we are starting on our styling portion. So here's what I'll be using. This is the Wee Dad Bye Bye Breakage Strengthening and Thickening Serum. Uh, I mostly just put this on like these parts because this is where I have the least amount of hair. And then we will go in with our continuous spray bottle. Yeah, that's cool. And then we will go with the Wee Dad Advanced Climate Control Anti-Frizz Heat Humidity Gel. This works very, very well in high humidity, obviously. Um, I also really like the flaxseed gel. If you guys follow Natural85, she has a really good recipe on that. Um, I used to use that, but I don't use that as much anymore because it, I don't, I'm just like too lazy to make it, honestly. Um, and then next we'll go in with the Whipped Curls Daily Conditioner and Primer by Wee Dad. I'm almost out of it, but thank goodness I have a second bottle. And then after that, we will go and detangle with our Deadman brush. I modified it and took out every other row. So it's just, it's just like a little less pull on my hair when I brush through it. And I did use this We Dad Vita Curl Softifying Mousse. It sounds like an ad, but I, this is not sponsored or anything. I just really like We Dad. Uh, but I used this and I did not really like it that much. I didn't feel like it had a lot of hold and my curls just felt like kind of weighed down. Now this is my holy grail, this Moroccan oil mousse. Um, you can get it from Amazon. My sister like gets a continuous uh, refill, so she gave me one that she had extra. Thank you, Ivy. Um, but yeah, this smells really good, and I really like this because my hair is really defined, but it still has movement, so it's not kind of like a statue, you know? It's just like has a lot of movement, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, I have everything laid out because I don't like taking the caps off like my hands are wet and everything, you know? And I have my towel here so I can wipe off my hands in between. And then I, I usually use my towel up until wash day and then I will put it in the hamper for washing. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I usually do from the back to the front and we're gonna go ahead and get started. 
Okay, so while I'm doing this, I'll tell you guys about my hair journey. Um, so when I was younger, my mom gave me my sister's... <clears throat> Actually, I need hair clips. One second. Okay, we're back. Just got some hair clips. So my mom gave us relaxers when I was growing up. And you can call them relaxers. Some people call them perms. I call them relaxers. But me and my sisters, you know, we have a lot of hair. And so it was a lot for mom to take care of. And so I had relaxers up until college, basically. And then after she passed, I got locks in my hair and I it was really hard for me to like get locks though because I still had the relaxed hair so it was still straight and stringy but also like my new curls were coming in you know so after I got my locks I had them for two years I think and eventually I like saw a little curl pop out when I was retwisting them or like crochet hooking them and I was like oh my god like I don't know what my hair actually looks like natural like I had I had no idea and so I got curious about that, and that's what started my natural hair journey. Um, my boyfriend at the time helped me to comb out my locks, which was very nice of him. So we brushed out my locks like in a weekend, and then my natural hair came out. And it was really difficult for me though, because you know, going from having relaxed hair to locks to natural hair, I didn't really give myself time to learn about natural hair. And so I really turned to Natural 85's channel here on YouTube, and she taught me a lot about just loving my hair and trying to just learn about it and to actually take the time to do it. Because I feel like people with curly hair, you know, like it's, it's seen as a chore, and it definitely is. Like I don't really like my wash days really, but also it's necessary. I want to love my hair and I want to give it the love and care that it deserves. And so that's why I'm filming this video. So hopefully it'll give me a little bit of motivation to actually take my time to do it well. Cause I noticed that when I don't put a lot of product in my hair and I don't really take my time with it, it doesn't last as long, you know? It only lasts like maybe three days before it starts to look a little bit uh, dry and just not really popping curls or anything. I mean, like it's cute, you know? I just, I just need to take time to do it. Um, so anyway, after I discovered my natural hair, and I tried to take my time to do it, I grew my hair out and I <laughs> found it to be really, really difficult to take care of. Long hair is difficult to take care of in general, but I feel like when it's curly, there's a lot more upkeep and there's a lot more products. And I honestly feel like the curly hair community's products are a lot more expensive. And when I go get my hair cut, it's, it's like, it's really annoying how expensive it is. Like when I was in Korea, um, I went to what I thought was a curly hair salon. That's what it was advertised as. And so I went there and they didn't know what they were doing. Um, they like washed my hair and as they're washing my hair, my hair was like dripping wet. And he was asking me all these questions about it. And I'm like, okay, well, I thought that you guys like knew what you were doing, you know, um, but they didn't. And then as my hair was wet, the guy was like, oh, we're gonna charge you 10,000 won extra because it's curly, which is basically like an, an extra $10 which I didn't feel like was fair, but my hair was already wet and I was already in the salon, you know? So like, I didn't really have a choice but to keep going. And like, when I get my hair done here in Colorado, it's it's like upwards of 120 to 180 sometimes. And I understand that it's more work technically, but I just feel like people know that curly hair, people have to, like, I can't really go to like, a regular barber you know or like a straight hair salon because they they're not that trained in it um, and I didn't realize until I talked to someone who was a beautician and she told me that in school like you like they just show you maintenance and color and stuff like if you want to learn how to do curly hair basically you have to find the information on your own it's not like just naturally taught as part of the uh, beauty school which I didn't realize before so now I understand a little bit more of the background and why a lot of people don't know how to do curly hair. But, you know, so that, that just forces me to do it on my own. And don't even get me started on braids. Like, find people to braid my hair is an, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And you have to come with your hair blow dry. Sometimes you have to come with it, like, basically, like, parted before they even do anything to your hair. So that's a whole other thing, you know? Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how to do my hair myself, mostly, so that I don't have to waste hundreds of dollars 
Um, so I'm gonna do each section and then I usually do the mousse all at once. So I'll do that at the end. But yeah, growing up, my hair was never really seen as, like, people say like your hair is your crown, you know, but my crown just always felt very difficult to take care of. It felt difficult because my mom also didn't really know how to take care of curly hair. Her hair was more fine and her, her curls weren't as kinky as mine are. Not them are like super kinky, but they're just kinkier than hers, you know? And when my hair was relaxed, I found myself like as a child being really anxious all the time because I was worried about getting it wet. I was worried about like getting sweaty and having like my curls show. Like it was way too much anxiety for a kid to handle, you know? And then when I went natural, there wasn't a whole lot of information about it either. And so I found myself like feeling like I had to have my curls a certain way. Like I, I like had a friend who made fun of me because my edges weren't laid, you know? And I was like, why am I still, like even though my hair isn't straight anymore, I'm still self-conscious about it. And I still feel like my hair has to be a certain way before I walk out in public, you know? But it's not like I live around a lot of people of color. So they don't really notice if my hair is looking good that day or looking bad that day anyway. You know, so I don't really know why I get anxious about it still, but I do feel like sometimes in the curly hair community, my hair has to be perfectly defined. I have to have my lip, my edges laid. I have to, um, you know, have my hair looking a certain way at all times. And I, I just don't want to keep feeling like I have to do that. You know, like my hair will, what I just do? Um, but I don't want my, I don't want to feel like I have to have my hair a certain way all the time for it to be acceptable by other people. You know, this is how my hair grows out of my head. Like, however I show up in the world is how I'm going to show up with it. You know, like I, I don't want to keep putting that pressure on myself. And I've been thinking a lot about my hair recently too, because I've never really changed it besides having locks. I've only really like had my hair this one color my entire life and I would like for like my eyebrows to be a little bit darker for example so I'm considering doing color my sister had a color, color consultation and she kind of inspired me to look into that for myself um I do kind of want to do red but my older my oldest sister Ivy her hair is red and we already look very much alike so I don't want to look like I'm copying her or like we're gonna walk around looking like twins, you know? People get as confused a lot all the time as it is. So I kinda wanna do my own thing. I really am waiting for like a silver gray, for example. I really like gray hair. I really think it looks cute on people. Yeah, so I'm just something different with my hair, you know? I, I loved it and I think the color does work well on me, but I just wanna pop a little bit more. And I also feel like I just look like my, young, my younger self which is cool, but I just want a change. I want to look a little bit more my age, I think, and more like myself. I feel like, especially like the clothes I've been wearing recently and how my hair is, it's just, it's just like a part of someone who I used to be and I just want to grow into who I feel like I'm becoming a little bit more. When it comes to my hair, I, I love volume. Like I love it to look big and fluffy. And I'm not really into definition that much. Like, it's cool if I have it, but if I had to choose, I would want big, bouncy, froey hair. Okay, so that is one section. What's really important for me is to be consistent. Like, if I do my hair one way um, in a certain order, it's important for me to keep that throughout, because if I switch it up or if I use a product that's not in the same order then my you can tell like when my hair is finally done how different it all looks okay she's popping love that and I did get my hair like when I got cut last I did get bangs but I think this week I'm just gonna do a middle part because eventually I'd like to just have like pieces down and then maybe do a low bun or something I only wash my hair once a week because like I was in the shower for 45 minutes just now washing it and like the water got cold at one point and where's my other part? Oh. <laughs> Found it. Um, but my hair, I mean the water got cold at one point and it just, it was taking too long and it got to a point where I was like getting lightheaded because I haven't really eaten that much today. 
so that took a lunch break and I mean it's it's a process it really is so I try to just do this once a week maybe once a week and a half honestly what I also like about these we dad products is I feel like less is more and they last a really long time like I feel like they're formulated really well so that I don't feel like I have to use a lot at once and a little really does go a long way they are a little bit expensive but I think I mentioned before how, how they have the sale a lot they had like 30% off sales and stuff so I feel like you can, you can find a good deal on them on the products usually I still haven't really quite figured out how to like sleep with my hair I have a silk pillowcase but whenever people are like, oh, put your hair in a pineapple, like, no, that does not work for my hair because when I take it down, it just looks like straight and then the curl at the end, it looks kind of jacked up. So I haven't really figured out how to do that yet. But I, I just keep telling myself, like, I'm doing this for the first time. You know, like, we're all doing this life for the first time. We're still figuring things out, even though we're adults. Like, I don't expect myself to have everything figured out. Even though I've been on this hair care journey for a long time, I don't know everything and I, I'm still figuring out what my hair likes and what she doesn't like. And I just need to be, need to be patient while I'm figuring those things out, you know? Everything's falling over. It's falling. <laughs> Whoa. And then at the end, I usually flip my hair over and put the mousse all in together. The mousse is kind of like my last stop because that's just really gonna make my hair defined and a little bit more me oh but this continuous spray bottle is the shit basically um because it's it's hard enough like doing all this stuff i really feel like my hair days my wash days are a workout, like an upper arm workout. And so the less I have to do, the better. Just having to spray every single time can be kind of a lot for your hands. So I think the continuous spray bottle has been really helpful for me. I think I got it at Sally's for like maybe five bucks. After this I might diffuse my hair I don't really diffuse it that much because I don't like to put a lot of heat on my hair but I am gonna be going outside because I need to go to Ulta so I don't want to be out in the cold with you know my hair being wet so I might do that all right so it's done I'm just going to let it air dry for a little bit and then I'll come back and diffuse it but it's really important for me to remember that my hair never looks good on the first day, maybe not even the second day, but the third and fourth, fifth day, it's popping. Okay, I'm going to diffuse and then go for a drive. I feel like I need to just clear my head for the day. Diffuse attachment, she's... <laughs> okay, she's kind of broken, but she's fine. Um, so I will do it on warm and then low. I don't really do hot because then my hair is going to get really like dry. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so usually after that I'll do a, so usually I'll do a cool shock after that lets me know like what parts are still wet, which is fine. Um, but I don't want to make it completely 100% dry because my hair will become frizzy at that point. But I'm just going to do a cool shot to see what other parts I want to get done and then what other parts need to be sort of shaped up. Pick out the top so it's not so much like a lampshade. And that's it. Alright, thank you for sticking around with me if you made it to the end. And I will see you guys for the next week's video. Bye.